I'm Dani Carter Iddens, motivational speaker, entrepreneur, and the founder and creator of Taking Back You. The month of May is so special for moms, and this May should be no different. And mama, you are facing a unique opportunity right now. This is the perfect time to get started on that dream business that you always wanted to start, or to level up the business that you've started but haven't had the time to grow. And that's why I created Mom Business May. Join me for this free 30-day online workshop that takes you step by step and shows you how to start and grow your own business. And even better, throughout the month, I'll be joined by an amazing group of mom bosses whose main goal is to help you make your entrepreneurial dreams your reality. Just think, by this time next month, you could have the beginnings of a great business on your hands. Claim your spot by visiting facebook.com slash groups slash May 2020 or visit dannycarteridens.com for more information. Also, be sure to subscribe to this podcast to hear from seasoned mom bosses every week in May. This May is going to be one for the books, and I can't wait to get started. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Taking Back You Momcast. Hi, guys. How you doing? It's Danny Carter Iddens, your host this week and every single week. And you guys, we are in the thick of Mom Business May over here at Taking Back You. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, what I mean is in Taking Back You, we are doing an entire month-long series called Mom Business May, where we are helping moms build thrive, start, whatever their business. And this week, we have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful woman who is becoming a friend of mine. Her name is Megan Diaz of Megan Diaz Consulting and Coaching. And she is a business and success coach that helps soulful entrepreneurs build an authentic brand and create processes that support a thriving business and life. You guys, her episode today is such a great one. Because I think that it really encompasses what we experience as moms. So at the beginning of the episode, we actually are going to talk about her issues that she had with, um, you know, infertility, with then subsequently postpartum depression and anxiety. And we're going to talk about how, as moms, we can take those struggles and we can use them to redefine success in our lives. Because I think what happens is we hold ourselves to a very different standard than we should because of what we see on social media and, you know, all of that. But Megan is here. She's going to talk to us about how her experiences with infertility and postpartum depression and anxiety led her to become more resilient and to redefine success in her life, in her business life, in her family life, and you know, just all around. This is a wonderful episode. And I'm going to share a little bit more about Megan after we get done. I hope you enjoy this episode and I'll talk to you at the end. Coming to you straight from Indianapolis, aka the Circle City, this is the Taking Back You Momcast. The Taking Back You Momcast is a witty, authentic, and sometimes sarcastic podcast for millennial mamas who are in the thick of mom life. And I'm your host, Danny Carter Iddens, wife, millennial mama, motivational speaker, and motherhood advocate. Hello, everyone. Well, as you know, we are in the thick of Mom Business May over here at Taking Back You. And so every episode this month is going to feature an entrepreneurial mama who is sharing how they are overcoming the obstacles of being a mom and who started and grew their business or in the process of starting or process of growing. And our guest today is no different. Her name is Megan Diaz, and she is a business and success coach at Megan Diaz Consulting which helps soulful entrepreneurs, and I love this, I love this, build an authentic brand and create processes that support a thriving 
business, and life. Guys, that's why she's here today. And Megan is also going to talk to us about something that led her to build her business. And that's why she's here today also to talk about her experience with postpartum depression and how it helped her become more resilient and taught her how to redefine success in her life. You guys, Megan is one of our people. She is a yoga pants wearing mama. Um, I have on yoga pants as we speak, and she lives in Massachusetts with her husband and her two children. Welcome, Megan. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And and I've been sharing um, the last few episodes that I've done. I set out a message on social media asking for beautiful mamas to answer, you know, kind of the call of discussing topics that may be a little bit more difficult um, than what we've discussed in the past. And Thankfully, luck, luckily, you responded. So I want to thank you for that. Um, and you you came in right away and you said, like, I would love to discuss postpartum depression. And I think that that's an excellent topic um, to discuss on this show. So can you just tell us, you know, your experience and kind of how you um, kind of how you got through it? And I, I kind of I love the the you know, just the perseverance of it, that you, yeah. you experience postpartum depression. Um, and I like the way you just, dis- you define it as something it's not, we'll go into that a little bit later, but you know, can you just tell us your experience with postpartum depression and kind of how you figured out, Hey, this is going on? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, a little background, even before I ha- experienced postpartum depression, um, I, I, I was trying to get pregnant with my daughter. Um, my, my daughter is my oldest child and I struggled a ton. Um, my daughter was three years in the making <laughs> and I had, um, I had issues. I had three miscarriages leading up to the birth of her. Um, I had fertility issues and went through a whole huge process, a huge chunk of money to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was a lot to have her. And in the process, I actually had a history of anxiety and depression in college and post-college. And when I was going through the fertility issues and researching, because when you're going through stuff like that, like you research so much, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, it took over my life for a little while, how much I researched. Um, I, I came across research about how a lot of times you're more likely, if you have a history of, of depression or anxiety, you have, you, you're more likely to experience it when you deal with fertility issues. Mm. So I, when I had my daughter, I was honestly, I was expecting to have either postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety or something. And I was, I was ready for it, you know, like not ready. You can never be ready. But I like my husband and I talked about it before we had my daughter and like, we were looking for the signs. Yeah. Yeah, I kept my eyes open for signs. And I think with my daughter, I was on such a high after going through so much to get her. And I was just so incredibly at peace and happy that she was finally there. I didn't, I didn't have any issues. I mean, yeah, I went through the normal mom struggles, lack of sleep, but I had, you know, there were times where I was down, you know, hormones and all the crazy stuff, but there was nothing extreme enough for me to have a red flag go up. Yeah. When I got pregnant with my son, it was a very, very different experience. Um, we weren't even trying to have my son. <laughs> okay. Like, Isn't that how, I feel like that happens so it, often. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like whatever happened with my daughter knocked my system into, into like, oh, yeah. functionality. <laughs> and it was like, I hadn't gone back on birth control because we knew eventually we wanted to try. And I didn't want to pump myself up with hormones or anything yeah. um, given my experience with my daughter. Like I wanted the best case scenario to happen when we were ready, at, when we were ready is the big, <laughs> the big thing. Yeah. Um, one time I'm protected. Mm-hmm. I got pregnant with my son. One time was all it took. My daughter was three years in the making one yeah. time for my son. So I was not, I wasn't ready. I don't know how else to say it. I like mentally, I wasn't ready. I had just gotten back into the swing of things with work, which, um, this kind of ties into how I ended up really refocusing my, my work. Um, I just got back in a swing of things. So I was like, kind of like happy where we were. I was loving my daughter. I wanted one time with my daughter. Like one kid is so different. You get so much more devoted, devoted time with them. And I wasn't ready to give that up. I don't think. So when I got pregnant with my son, it wasn't like I was 
sad about it, but I also wasn't, it wasn't the same state of mind at all. Right. Um, I kind of just was like, okay, well, I'm pregnant. Um, this is just how it is. I wish it was further along down the road, but it is how it is and whatever. My, with my daughter, we didn't find out what she was with my son. My husband was like, let's find out. And I was like, okay, whatever. I was kind of in like whatever mode Yeah. leading up to my son's birth. And it was, I kind of was going through emotions with everything. Like I was dreading having to stop working when I had him because I was like, oh, but then at the same time, I kind of stopped giving my work everything I had because I was pregnant and I felt like crap most of the time. And I was like, mm-hmm. eh, well, I'm going to have to stop anyway. So it like totally threw me off my game in every aspect. Um, so then when he came, it's like I went from um, kind of just functioning at a level to dropping even more to where I was just surviving. I don't, I don't know how else to put yeah. it. Like I did the minimum of what was necessary for him. It, it wasn't that I didn't love him. I loved him. I, I loved my husband. I loved, I, I was sad about, I grieved for sure about my daughter not being one, having one-on-one with her anymore. That was a really hard adjustment. But um, more than anything, it was just like, I, I became kind of numb. Mm. Um, and I stopped functioning quite right. And I did what I had to do for him, but I started resenting him. Yes. Um, and But I also, I wasn't like thinking like, oh, you're going to have any issues this time around because I hadn't with my daughter. So in my head, I was like, well, you made it through the daughter, the one that was the hard pregnancy. And I mean, her pregnancy, I was like, like I had early um, contractions, early stage labor, like all sorts of issues with her pregnancy, even just having her, everything was hard. Mm -hmm. (laughs) My son, everything was easy. And yet when he came, I was like, just not quite functioning at my peak. I don't, I was just kind of going with the motions. I was doing what I needed to do. Oh, he needed to be fed. I fed him. Mm -hmm. But I also was handing him off to anybody that came to my house. Anybody that showed up, I was like, okay, here you go. You can have him with my daughter. I never did that. Um, but it wasn't until I don't even, I, I, I don't remember if it was the nighttime or the daytime. There was a period of time where he was crying. There was one time he was crying and I got, I was so angry and resentful toward him. I actually swore at him and called him an F and a hole. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. For the language. Yeah. Yeah. And I like put him down and I like, it wasn't like I heard him, but I like put him down. And I walked away and swore at him. And it was like this switch flicked in my head. And I was like, why are you so angry at him? I don't think this is right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was, it was that period of time where I realized like, yeah, you haven't been right at all this entire time. I think you need to talk to somebody. And I talked to my husband about it and he, he was like, Oh yeah, you're kind of right. <laughs> mm-hmm. You've kind of been like a zombie and angry and like not yourself. So I ended up contacting um, my doctor and luckily I had a really supportive doctor who um, pretty quickly um, I, I had known already luckily what, medication I had been on previously, like years and years ago, back when I was in college that had worked. Um, and she said, well, if that worked, why don't you try that? So she put me on it, um, pretty quickly. Um, and it started helping within a couple of weeks. Um, but it was kind of a six month period where I was just angry and not myself. I don't even really remember some parts of his infancy. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I understand that. Um, and you know, two things I, I want to say that I am so, um, happy that your doctor was receptive to, you know, what you, um, were experiencing yeah. because I know, and we, we talked about this before. Um, I know there are a lot of mothers who may be going through something similar who are afraid to, you know, throw up the white flag because they're afraid that someone's going to think that they're, you know, crazy, um, that they are not going to be, you know, able to, um, take care of their child. So they're afraid they're going to take the child away from them or, you know, any number of things. And so I'm really yeah. happy that you had, that your physician was, you know, um, someone who was actually sensitive to 
what was going on with you and not just thinking like, oh, it's a crazy hormonal woman who will do, you know, God knows yeah. what to their baby. Um, Cause that's well, not heard, what it. I've heard people even talk about um, their doctor saying, oh, you have a supportive husband, so you shouldn't be. You no, that's not how it works. Way. That's not like, how it works. No, no. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I had a super supportive husband um, and I still had, you know, what I realize now in hindsight was postpartum depression. Um, yeah after talking to you and talking to other people and my husband was the most supportive in the world. He's, he's the most supportive yeah. person like ever. Um, and so it's not that it has nothing to do with that. Um, yeah. you, your brain doesn't know that, <laughs> you know, your no, hormones no, don't no. know that. Exactly. Um, and so much, um, so much of it is like stuff you, you can't control it. That's yes. the reality of the situation. Right. I legitimately like, was angry enough at my son that I swore at a, an infant, you know? Right. That's and, not, and, and I, in your it wasn't right a one time thing. Like it happened many times. That right. I was just like, and it's like in your you right know? mind, that wouldn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like, it's not obviously. like I'm a, and I, I think I would never actually do anything or have done anything. But at the same time, like the amount of anger that I had is not something that is normal. Right. To feel towards an infant. Right. Um, right. And it's not something that I normally would feel toward anybody. I'm not, I'm not a kind of person that's like, they're a very angry person in right. the first place. Yeah. Um, like, I'm not even this angry anyway. Exactly. Um, so you, that's how you know that, okay, wait a minute, something's not, you know, um, not jiving. And, and, you yeah. know, and I think that the second thing is that I, I appreciate the fact that your husband was able to be real with you yeah. and say, you know what, Megan? Yeah. You, if we're being honest, it's, it's not You're a little crazy right now. Right. You know, and I, I told, I told Megan this story. I don't know if I've told, I don't know if I've shared this on the podcast, but my husband um, also tried to share with me that perhaps something was um, a little off and, but he did God love him. He, Brought, he came home one day, um, and in my and I've shared how my husband loves books, and so that's his answer to all questions are, can be found in books, according to him. And so, he came home from work one day, and he's like, "Oh, I stopped by um, the bookstore, and I got something for you." And God love him, the book was um, postpartum for dummies, postpartum depression for dummies, and I threw the book at his head. Um, and you know, he meant well. He was trying, like I said, it, everything it for him thought, is a book. It was the thought that counts right. now. It was the thought that counts now. Um, <laughs> the time. Six and a half years ago, I thought about murdering him. So it, <laughs> you know, but yeah, I mean, and I think that that's, I do appreciate that he was able to recognize that something was not right. And yeah. in his own way, he was trying to, you know, uh, raise the, raise the flag. Like, hey, yeah. um, but one of the other things that you you said that when we spoke before that I thought was so interesting and, and no, was that you stressed that postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety is not the baby blues. Mm -hmm. And you talked yeah. about, um, you know, this, like that seems to be like the catch all phrase that we're using. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. Oh, you had a baby and you're feeling blue. Oh, those are the baby blues. No, that's not. Um, yeah, and, and you were saying you don't even like that, you know, yeah, I, the term baby blues <laughs> actually like makes me angry. Yeah. Um, I'm not really an angry person, but here's the thing, like, okay. Hormones definitely play a role in a lot of things right. when it ha you have a baby and there, there is a, a lot of times a sadness and, and changes that, that make you feel a little bit down sometimes. But the problem is that that term, people that actually suffer from postpartum depression or anxiety, like mine also was anxiety. Like I had mm -hmm. severe anxiety about, for some reason it, it, it manifested in my daughter going anywhere. Like to the point where I would like, I, I would feel like I was having a heart attack when my daughter left wow. to go with like my sister who is like her, you know, one of the people that has always taken care of her the most. And I would have like such your anxiety that I felt like my heart would hurt. Um, wow. and the, the problem is like that, that term, the baby blues, it, it, it becomes a cat, like the people that have these extreme emotions and, and that really need help people brush them away. Yeah. 
saying, oh, it's just baby blues or, oh, it, you'll get over it kind of thing. And the problem is like, there is something that's beyond that, that is so severe and people need help with so much. And the amount of care that moms get in the first place mm -hmm. after they have baby isn't even adequate. So having something that can be so generalized for people that really need more care than they're already getting, like doctors don't even do checkups to right. check in on you until you're it's six weeks po postpartum parents By then, get guests yeah. that show up at their house and the guests just show up and, and hold the baby instead of checking in on you. Like I still, I, I remember my, my sister, the sister that my daughter would go with, um, we were in the kitchen and I was so upset and so worked up and she was convinced that I was mad at her. And I had to be like, no, it wasn't about, this isn't about you. Like this has nothing to do with you. Right. There is something wrong with me right now. Like I am not okay. I am not in a good place. And I still remember the look on her face and like the realization, like, I haven't even asked you if you're yeah. okay. Yeah. And this was months after I had had my, my son, like this was at least two, two, maybe even three months after I had actually given birth to my son. And this is like one of my best friends Yeah, who hadn't even like, hadn't even occurred to her that I could be, and she's one of the ones that every time she walked my door, I'd be like, please yeah. take him. Yeah. Please take him. Cause I didn't want, I didn't want him at that time. Yeah. Like I would take care of him and do the minimal, but I didn't want to, you know, and, and that's my problem with babies, <laughs> the baby blues is it's like, yes. it's such a overused blanket term that diminishes what people really go through when it's worse than baby blues. And it's so easy for people to ignore the moms because of it. They right. don't even Oh, she's just, she's just adjusting. And it's she's just, just going blues. through this, you know, boo-boo-doo. We all did. Um, no, yeah. no. There's so um, much yeah. more. Like I now, since this has happened, like if, if anybody I know or love has a baby, like I'm much more conscientious about checking on them <laughs> yeah. and actually like bring something to help take care of them versus just the baby. Yes. That you know? was, um, I, I had a, I, I was blessed with, or I am blessed with a mother-in-law who had four children. Um, my husband is the oldest of four. And so she was very cognizant, I think, because um, when she had her children, they moved a lot and they also um, didn't live close to family. Mm -hmm. And so because they moved a lot, she didn't necessarily have a lot of friendships, you know, uh, yeah. created. And then they didn't live close to family. So a lot of times she was on her own, you know, and um, I remember when my son was born, she would come over and she would just take, you know, take my son and she would go, okay, why don't you go upstairs and get some sleep? Yeah. Um, or one time her and my um, siblings-in-laws, <laughs> yeah. they came over and they cleaned the house. Um, and they were just like, why don't you go get some rest? We're going to clean the house, um, make dinner, and then we'll, go, we'll be out of your hair. Yeah. And that was, you know, something that was like, I look back on it and I can't even think about how invaluable that was. Yeah. Like um, how meaningful was that? Yes. Versus just showing up and being like, okay, you, you know, and that's, yeah. and, and I had that too. Like, you know, I, I remember when I went back to work, um, I was still nursing, you know, every I, I, two weeks every two weeks, ugh, every two hours. Um, and so I took my son with me cause I, I taught dance and, um, luckily I had, I worked in an environment where I could bring my baby with me. I had a lot of teenage girls who were <laughs> more than happy to, you know, take care of him. Um, and also the moms that worked at the studio, everybody was in, you know, cause he was kind of yeah. like the first studio baby. Um, and so everybody was just, chomping at the bit to get a hold of him. Well, I got out of my car, I returned to work and a, and a slew of teenage girls run to my car. They take my baby out of the car seat and they go in the house I mean, go in the studio and no one even said hi to me. Yeah. So I was standing outside of my car and I was like, what just happened? Yeah. And so I walk in the studio, maybe one of my students and these, these, some of these girls, I've known them since they were two years old. Maybe one of them looked up at me. Oh, hey, Miss Danny. Back to the baby. And I was just like devastated. And it's not even because like, you know, I didn't want them to ooh and ah over my son. It had nothing to do with that. But it was just like, hey, um, 
I'm here too. I'm here. Like, you know, hey, just mm-hmm. had a C-section a month ago. Um, no, I'm good. Thanks. When they, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, that was, that was a rude awakening because yeah. I realized like, you, like you said, the, it's not, um, it becomes about the baby. And, and this is not to say that it shouldn't be about the baby. Babies are important. We need to take care of them. They cannot take care of themselves. They have literally no ability to take care of themselves. They need us for everything. But this, you know, um, focus. We need to take, be taken care of too. Right. Yeah. Like this <laughs> taking the focus off of the mom completely. And, you know, and I, and I shared with you, I said, I, I think it's insane that I had a baby and then they just put me and my husband and our child in the car and they were like, go okay, for good luck. the rest of your life. Good luck. Have fun. Right. And nobody, nobody asked me like, are you, do you feel like you can do this? Do you know what you're doing? Do you even have a, a mod? Do you have anybody in your life who could tell you what to do? Um, you have anything like nobody, nobody asked me anything. Yeah. Um, well, and then as, as mothers, it's like, so not only do you have the baby that you're now responsible for, but it's like, when you have a baby, your body completely changes. Yes. You're pumped up with hormones yes that completely changes everything about you your, from your anatomy to your emotions yes um and and it's like you have this whole new person to get to know it's yeah. not just your baby yeah, you this also is have a... to get to know yourself again right, right? yeah and, and yeah you do like you know you <laughs> when you become a mom you have to reinvent yourself yeah. Um, and I love that when you said that, when we were talking before, you have to con- constantly and continually reinvent yourself because you are not who you were, you know, um, even a few hours before giving birth, you are yeah. another person. Now you, exactly. you, you are now wearing another hat. Yeah. Um, you know, now your wife and mom and sister and, daughter, you know, so you've added another hat. Um, and so, you know, that takes that does not happen lightly. <laughs> no, um, no. You know, that... and sometimes it's harder than others, right? Yeah. Like I still, I still look back to my daughter's birth and I'm like, I, I, I still don't quite understand how I made it through as yeah. smoothly as I did. Um, and all I can think is that it's just, it was what I wanted so badly that that trumped right. the struggles of the adjustment. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, definitely. I wanted a, a, a child so badly after trying for so long that it trumped any potential yes. badness or anything that, that, that happened. Um, whereas with my son, it, it was, there was just so much overwhelm yeah. that it just was like an explosion. And then, and that explosion completely demolished me, Right. completely, completely demolished me. Yeah. And, and I think that I, I like that word demolished, not that I like the word, what it means, but I like the, your use of it. Um, because I think that sometimes we're afraid to say like this, 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 this broke me. Um, it, it broke me. And I think the other thing that feeds into, um, this whole idea that, you know, I constantly, I feel like I'm in a constant battle with this idea that moms have to be able to do it all and to be perfect and to not, you know, say boo. Um, But I think that when you are sending a mom off from, you know, from the hospital with their baby and you're like, bye, love you. Who cares if you need anything (laughs) that is reinforcing in their minds? Well, I shouldn't complain. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it's too hard for anyone else. The no idea. one else has said anything like, you know, oh man, no one's asked me if I need anything. So it must not be something that I should be worried about. It, not, it yeah. must not be something and that it's I can ridic- complain it's about. It's absolutely ridiculous that it, it sets the expectations yes. of you, of perfectionism almost yes. up. Um, and like it's immediately, impossible. immediately. I still remember um, mm-hmm. being amazed at, so I, I, I've been around babies since I was 11. My nephew was born when I was 11. His, his crib was literally at the end of my bed when I was 11 and he would come into bed with me sometimes. So I have like, I've always known I wanted to be a mom. Yes. I've always known I would be a good mom. Um, and I've always been around kids. And on top of that, my mom like babysat and there was kids everywhere. Right. There was always children. Always kids. (laughs) Yes. Oh, that's awesome. But I, and, and I saw breastfeeding happening growing up, you know, mm-hmm. it wasn't like I have a billion, I have 15 cousins. So 
all of them are older. So everybody has babies that I've been around all the time. So I was very exposed to everything I thought. And yet I did not understand how hard breastfeeding was right? and how hard on top of that, not just breastfeeding, but pumping for God. Oh my gosh. Pumping it like it's like a full time. <laughs> yes. it, I mean, both of them are, if you do both, if you just breastfeed, all of it's a full-time job, but it like nobody tells you the realities yeah. of how hard it's going to be. Girl, and let me tell you, you don't, when you let <laughs> like, it, it's such a messed up system. The entire support system mm-hmm. for this is, is broken in my opinion. Um, no, and, you're right. You're right. Even down to the point that people don't talk about this stuff. And yeah. it's like, I'm, I've, I've become a very open book since yeah. having my children, partially because um, the fertility stuff that I went through. If I can help even one person by sharing yeah. my story and, and telling them what I did and what I've done and all that kind of stuff, when I realized that I potentially could um, and give somebody even hope that, you know, you could, you could still have a family. And maybe your family isn't you having a baby, but that doesn't mean you can't have a family. Right. Um, if I could help even just a little bit with that, and it kind of has propelled and, and been, uh, uh, that was just a starting point to being open about it for the same reason, like the, the postpartum stuff. If, if I can talk and tell my story and other people can hear it, and, but, but this entire subject is still somewhat taboo and it's not normally talked about. None right. of this stuff is normally yeah. talked about. It isn't. And, and I mean, I, I, oh my gosh, cause I, I, I breastfed. And, um, so, you know, we were doing every two hours and then I was teaching dance. And so at first I would bring him like on Saturdays when I was there all day, I would just bring him to work with me. But at nighttime I would have a bottle. So my husband could give him his nighttime feeding before um, he put him down for bed. So I I would come home from the studio um, and this would be eight or nine o'clock at night. And I'd be sitting on the edge of the bed and I'd be pumping so I could make sure that I had the milk for the next time my husband would need it to feed him. And so, I mean, I'd be sitting and I'd be cross-eyed tired because I just taught dance for five, four or five hours yeah. And I'm sitting on the end of the bed trying to pump and I'm trying to stay awake, um, you know, and cause this was right before they made those cups that just hold on. Yeah, you to, can actually you can walk actually, around. Yeah. I never yeah. had those. Yeah. No, never this was them. like, literally, I'm not, I'm not even kidding you. It was literally like, I think like six months later, they were like, look what we have. And I was just like, are yeah. you, are you kidding me? <laughs> and so I would sit there and I was trying to hold these bottles up and like not fall asleep. And like, it was just, you know, it was awful. And so I always tell people, like, if you can get away without pumping, do whatever you can do because I just, I like, oh my gosh, it was awful. It was awful. Um, And and there was a period of time where my daughter had thrush. Yeah. So then you, oh yeah. Oh my Back and forth between the two of us. Yes. So I had Mm -hmm. to pump because I was literally like, yes, you're like, like, ow. Yeah. (laughs) Things that nobody tells you about and it doesn't get talked about and you have to like read read all these books if you want to learn anything or Google. And, yes. and then that goes down a rat hole yep. and it's just yeah, all the stuff you know. that should be talked about and should be shared. Right. And then, you know, the next thing, you know, like you said, you go down the hole and then the next thing, you know, you're on Google and you're like, well, I think we both have, you know, amoebic dysentery according exactly. to this, you know, and <laughs> so I'm that's going to lose, lose my left breast. Yeah. My left this. breast from this is gone, you know? Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, that's the, that you're right. It, it does become like, like you said, you just like, you get sucked in. I, we call it, yeah. we, we literally call it going down the rabbit hole. And so, yeah. cause like I'll go on, you know, my phone it doesn't even have to be Google. You go on your phone to pay bills. And the next thing you know, I'm looking at a video on Twitter about, you know, an hour later. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at a TikTok <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then my husband would be like, did you pay the, the Comcast bill? Well, the what? No. <laughs> what bill? What bill? Who? Whose bill? You know? And so that's the, yeah, you're right. And so that then, and when you are hormonal and you are going through all these different, you know, things in your life and these changes, something like that, that we laugh about now, you can go on Google and you can get yourself all jacked up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because you're yeah. not necessarily a hundred percent working in your normal mind. Um, exactly. and so right. I agree with you 100%, but 
I want to switch gears because I think equally important and equally um, inspiring is the fact that from, you know, kind of from your struggle with this, you looked around and you realized, hey, um, obviously I'm not the only one and you've been sharing your story. And then you've also been, you know, growing a business that doesn't really have something to do with this, but it kind of does because it kind of was your inspiration to yeah. kind of realize other women also kind of needed, um, needed this inspiration and your expertise. So, you know, when in this, you have a business, you, you do like business consulting. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. Yeah. So what my background is in marketing communications. Um, and when I had my daughter around the time I had my daughter, I actually, I actually took my first step towards, mm -hmm. um, quote unquote, starting my own business. And I left the corporate world only to basically start consulting with another business, right? <laughs> running their marketing yeah. and communications and helping them launch, um, launch courses, online courses and things like that. Um, and the cool thing is when I did that, I really, it, in a way I was, you know, my own business because I was, I was consulting technically, but I also ran a team and the company was actually, um, a company that focused on, um, the education of positive psychology and whole person well-being. So it actually taught me a lot of the stuff for resiliency and to, the idea, it planted the idea in my head that having a fulfilling life is possible mm -hmm. <laughs> and that you can like be successful and, and kind, I hate to say you can have it all, but that you can create happiness and you can cultivate um, fulfillment and resiliency and things that, that lead to more positivity in your life, right? So I worked there and I was working there still when I had my son and it was great. But when I, when I, and I had just gotten back into the roof of things, like I said mm -hmm. earlier, um, when I got pregnant with my son and I was like, just starting to kill it again, you know, we were launching courses. I was like, I was kind of like re-stepping into my own with the organization and I was, I felt really great. And then I got pregnant mm -hmm. and it was like, I kind of hit a wall again because I was like, hold on, like something isn't quite feeling right. And I didn't know at the time when I, my entire pregnancy, I just kind of kept going through the motions. I was like, well, I can't leave. Right. Uh, I'm having a baby. So I, yeah. I need, I need income. I, nobody's going to hire me or want me when I'm going to be gone in three months. Right. Which is another, that's another topic for another day right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not even get into that. Yeah, right. Deal. Exactly. <laughs> so whatever the case, so I kind of like stuck it out. And as I was gone, the company went through a bunch of transformation. Um, when I was gone on maternity leave, quote unquote mm -hmm. maternity leave, I don't get paid. I didn't get paid on maternity right. leave because I was technically a consultant, but, um, when I came back, like my role was very different. And on top of it, I was very different. I like, I wasn't in the same place I was before. Um, but I had all this knowledge about, um, about happiness and, and fulfillment and, and creating a life that's thriving. And I was like, I kind of want that for myself. And I think I can do more. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm helping this one business that's teaching people about this stuff, but I think I can do more than that. Mm -hmm. um, and I decided like I, I needed to do something more. I needed to, I needed to go try at least doing more than just helping one business. I wanted to try to help lots of people, lots of women, women who were like me looking for something a little bit more than just working I don't know how to say, but working for the man. Yeah. <laughs> and no, you know, that wanted to actually create a life that like lit them up yes. and wanted something yes. that aligned with, with their heart and their soul and wanted to create a business that, that lifted them and other people up. And I wanted to do good in the world. That was like yes. the main thing. It's like, I, I had this like innate desire to really do good in the world. So I left and I created my own business and I mean, the goal of my business is to help other people create businesses that align with their hearts, that can help them thrive, that can, you know, do good in the world as well. And 
what I did is I kind of took what I was doing, my, my experience in marketing, my experience in, um, you know, websites, communications, uh, processes and systems for, um, you know, emails and, uh, building courses and all of that kind of stuff. And I combined it with everything I had learned from that organization in regards to coaching and positive psychology coaching. So helping people cultivate fulfilling lives and resiliency and things like that. And I kind of like just started doing my thing. Yeah. So you, you <laughs> um, just started. Yeah. And yeah, that's the thing. That's, like, that, yeah. I didn't, I didn't completely have a plan when it first started. Like I knew what I thought I wanted to do. Um, and to be honest, what I thought I wanted to do over a year ago is different than what I'm actually doing right now. Like right. it's totally evolved. <laughs> yes. And, but the thing is, I love what I'm doing right now. Yes. Like it's where I wanted it to go. Right. But I didn't even really know it yes. <laughs> when I first started. But the, the, but I, the word that I want everyone who's listening, I, the word I, I want them to hear is the word start, <laughs> um, you know, because I, I think that that's where most of us get stuck. Um, in full disclosure, Megan and I talked for about a half hour before we <laughs> record, we started recording this interview. And th that was one of the things that we discussed is that, you know, starting is what's so hard yeah. because what you what you do is you tell yourself all the reasons why you shouldn't start and i i hear it i hear it all the time in 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 my business um in in what i do because what i do is i i i go around and i tell women to start and they tell me no because a, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I'm like, well, that's cool, but start, <laughs> you know? And so um, that's what I, I, I love. And that's why I want Megan, you know, I, I want voices like hers. I want people like Megan on the show who can, who are giving us examples of like, this is a woman who obviously has some sort of stick to to go through, you know, um, fertility issues for three years before you had your daughter and then you had a, another wonderful <laughs> baby not you know and it was like what you know okay it happened it happens it happens to the best of us and you said okay but I still need to do I got to do me like yes I'm a mom but I have to do me and I have to get started I have to yeah. do something because you just knew you yeah. knew and here's you the thing it wasn't easy yeah like, right yeah it, no. it was scary mm -hmm. I knew that I had skills like I'm I'm blessed in that I already knew I had skills like marketing um be, being able to build websites being able to create email campaigns manage social media like I know those are very hard set skills right. Right. but I knew that wasn't just what I wanted to do right, right. I, like I didn't want to just implement things all the time for people I didn't want to just build email campaigns I didn't Honestly, I do not want to build somebody's entire website. That is not my goal for my business. Ugh, yeah. <laughs> um, I can do it. So I knew right. I always had that as a potential skill and I do offer that, but it's not necessarily like what lights me up, but I had to start somewhere and it wasn't easy. Like when I first started, I was 100% nap time hustling. Like yeah. I only worked. I have two kids, right? So my daughter wasn't napping anymore. When my son <laughs> stopped at the same time my son joined this world cool Great. so i i only <laughs> could i only could um basically work when she we we actually started sending her to um a daycare mm -hmm. a, a at home daycare so that when my my son napped i could that. get work done yeah that was that was basically the only time either that or at night and i did that for until December of this year. Yeah. That was all I did. Yeah. It was nap time hustle at night. Um, Never underestimate I, the power of a nap time hustle, man. Yeah. And isn't that crazy too, when you think about before kids, you're like, what was what I, I doing? Do? Right. And that's what I always say. I'm like, what, what the heck 
heck was that? I said, I'm like, Jim, we should have conquered the world yeah, because seriously. the amount of things I can get done in, you know, and my son's, my son's six and a half. So naps are, are they're long gone, but the amount of things that I can get done now, it's like, um, in a Marvel movie, like I turn on, I can turn on Iron Man and then like, yep. like watch that. And then I go and I do what I got to do. But I'm like, the amount of things I can get done in two hours, like, what the heck amazing, was I doing right? up until I was 29 years old? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I should have had a lot more things figured out. But, um, yeah, so never underestimate. And listen, if you have to, if that's what you, if that's when your hustle is, you have a nap time hustle and you do what you got to do. And I can tell you, there's so many moms that are like, I start at eight o'clock at night. I work from eight to 11. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah. if that's what you got to do then um, and the thing is the, the thing that I always told myself, cause it, sometimes it got really overwhelming and it still does now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, and I mean, obviously right now my husband's home given the circumstances and stuff. So like I have help, which is nice cause I'm putting more time in, but when it gets overwhelming, when it would get overwhelming, I would remind myself, this is a season. Like yes. ultimately yes. my goal is not to, not to always be working when right. I have my spare time, you right. know? But in this season, when I am first starting, when I am starting to grow, when I'm trying to get the good clients, that those good clients start making referrals, which is yes. the point I'm at now, you know, I'm getting the referrals in and that's yeah. like, I'm not having to do as much of the legwork. Um, that is when like, it's a season, it's not yeah. forever, right? but you need to start and you need to understand that you have innate value and you have uh, every one of us has some kind of skill, right? Yes. Like, like people will tell you they don't, but they do. You do. They, yeah. They, you do. Yeah, you have everybody. something of value. And even you as a person and as, as an individual, even your story has value. Yes. So just being you is valuable. It's figuring out how to take that, that turning it into a business and monetizing it, which you might need some help and some support, some support to do it. But once you do it, and if you can keep in mind and understand and that mindset of understanding that you really do have value and own it and yeah. show up with it over and over and over. Even if it's just at nap time, it keeps moving you forward. And that's when you grow your business and that's how you create something. Yeah, no. And that's, you know, um, I think that's, we have these, you know, like, okay, well, I want to start this business or whatever. And what you're thinking of is you're thinking when it's, you know, the Fortune 500 company. And so mm -hmm. you're like, well, I can't possibly figure out how to get there. So I just am not even going to start. And it's like, yeah. no, 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 no. You're looking at that chapter, that, you know, company's chapter 50 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And chapter one, you best believe they were doing something in their garage or, you know, like right now I'm recording exactly. my podcast in my my closet, my bedroom <laughs> closet. Like, you know, you, you cannot hold yourself, you can't compare yourself to their chapter all the way down there. Um, when you are at the start, exactly. um, it, that's just not how, that's not how it works. So, do you remember that commercial? Um, it was like these three old ladies and they were saying like, Oh, I put the pictures on my wall and she put it on her like actual wall. And because she didn't understand that it was yes, uh, instead of on a Facebook. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah, remember yeah. that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. And that's literally, I always say that to my, my son, that's not how this works. You know, you have to, you have to start somewhere and you're not yeah. going to be, you know, uh, where you're the person that you're kind of looking up to is. And yeah. I think that's the, the fear that a lot of people have is they go, well, I could never do what you do well right now you're right because right yeah. now you don't have you're you're not there yet it's yeah. gonna take a minute but like I wasn't doing that when I was at the beginning either you yeah. weren't doing that at the beginning either and like you said you weren't even doing what you want to be doing now like you yeah. were doing something else and it's led into um you know that you and you didn't even realize that when you started yeah. like yeah, it, it, it's an doing. evolution, right? Yeah, it, it like yeah. naturally evolves. And then, and then there's the strategic evolution too. And like, what I always think of is like, we all have our own versions of success. Yes, maybe mm -hmm. you're looking at somebody and you're like, oh, I, I think that would be grand to do what she's doing. But the reality is yours is going to be a little bit different. Right. That means the path you're going to take is going to be a little bit different. That means the steps you have to take along the path 
have to be a little bit different and they have to be right for you. So it's like you have to take the first step that is right for you as frozen two, you do the next right thing for you. Yes. Okay. My kids are addicted to frozen two. We have it on repeat right now. That's a good movie. Listen, you do Um, the next right thing. And when you do the next right thing repeatedly, 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 that's right for you. That's how you make it happen. That's how you make it happen. And that's, that's really what it is. And you have to, like you said, you got it or, um, to, you know, frozen has, they had to make it, write a song about it, but I always do you boo. That's what I always say. Do you boo. You gotta do you boo. Um, and that's just how it is. So, and I love your whole idea of, you know, you just have to figure out what success looks like for you because that's the thing. A lot of times we're comparing success. We're using someone else's success to look at ours and say, Oh no, that's not it. Well, no, it's because they're them. They're them. And you're you. Yeah. You know, and that's so hard, especially as a mom, I feel like, because yes. there's so much judgment that comes yes. from yes. one, one mom to another mom. And here's the thing, like for some success is working for a fortune 500 business, moving up the corporate ladder. Like I have some amazing sister-in-laws that are like, I, I, I still don't even know what they do, but they're right. like <laughs> amazingly successful. Yes. And just amazing individuals, amazing moms, you know, and like, that is the right thing for them. Um, for me, that sounds horrifying. Yes. Right. My version of success is completely different than theirs. Like I interviewed at one point in time with a big corporate thing and they used the term silos. Like the Ooh, company. Okay. Nope, nope. And I like, nope. I like had heart palpitations yeah, listening to it. Cause I'm like, Oh, I don't want to work somewhere that's siloed. I my like free- only, my <laughs> silos are like, I, if, if I'm at Magnolia farms, then okay, cool. But exactly. Than that, like, exactly. No, about silos. no, no, no. So like everybody's mm-hmm. versions of success is different, but like the comparison that happens between one and another, yeah. um, makes it really hard to live into that version of success yes. without the right mentality, without yes. the right mindset. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're right. So speaking of mindset, I want to tell everybody um, about something that you are getting together that you're preparing. You're, you're starting up a workshop. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a workshop that I'm, um, I'm transferring it to um, be online, just recorded um, a guided workshop that walks you through redefining success for yourself um, and setting goals and creating, breaking them down so that you can turn them into action. So you can actually work step by step by step, just like we're talking about to achieve goals. Um, and it's a process that is repeatable. That's the best thing about this is it's something that you can take, you can go through it once, and then you can keep applying it to your business, to your life, Mm -hmm. um, and really just try to up level what it is you're doing right now. And, and, aim for that version of success. Yes. You know, we love a goal here at Taking Back You. So um, (laughs) I will put information to that workshop, a way to access that workshop on um, the episode notes for this episode. And then also we are going to have Megan come on the uh, page. Probably she'll be on the Danny Carter Edens page and she's going to share with us because for the month of May, you can, you already know we've been sharing different little mini courses that we can do. So I want to have Megan come on and talk to you about goals and um, all of that. So you will be seeing her in person. That's uh, the fun thing I always tell people. I'm like, we're going to record a podcast, but don't worry. We don't take video. <laughs> yeah that one i'll have to actually like put yeah, makeup on and so stuff that's, i guess oh, yeah but we planned that one where we know we have to like put makeup on yeah, and, maybe put girl, on a nice top let me tell you i want to tell you one thing <laughs> let me tell you this covid situation and my hair it is not good um and so yeah i i because i get a relaxer mm. i have not had my relaxer um, since September. So it's like the other day I combed out my hair and I was about to get in the shower and my husband like walked behind me and he was like, geez, honey, you have to like hug the wall now. And I was just like, Listen, <laughs> it's here. We're natural. This is, this is what it is. This I'm natural, is. baby. Like, I'm all na- used to I it. literally am all natural. And like, this is what's happening. So, um, and, and so like, listen, if I can make it, and if everybody's been seeing me on Facebook, all I have is a bun and I COVID my, it's my COVID yeah. bun. Oh yeah. Yeah. My COVID the bun. hair up and the, yeah. yeah well, that's my everyday appearance. Yeah. Anyways, well, listen, I can't, I have no other option because it's literally, I'm just like, um, 
I hey, we're my... all in a little bit of survival mode. Yes, like, yeah. And so I, I, I consider if that is the pro- only problem that Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, that's all I have. That's literally. Right? So I'm like, listen, you do a bun, you do a dangly earring, cute headband, keep stepping. Um, You're and step. so you know, don't worry about it, you guys. Like, say it, the video situation, it happens. Um, so, <laughs> and so yeah, everybody's like, oh, my hairdresser, and I'm like, don't even tell me about the hairdressers right now, because I, my <sighs> Miss Phyllis, I love you, I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will, as soon as I can, I will see you. Um, but so, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to stop for today because Megan and I honestly could talk forever. We, we probably um, could. We, we really pro- could. You know, we really could. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to be honest with you. But um, on the, I just want to end with something. I always like to end with something fun and unusual. And I always ask, um, you know, hey, tell me something fun about you. Uh, especially when we're dealing with topics that might not necessarily be super fun. Um, and so... I asked Megan and Megan says she loves coffee and that you put maple syrup in your coffee. I want to yep. tell you something. That's not so weird. I do the exact same thing. No way. Yes. Yes. No that's way. How we, that's how we drink our coffee. So I thought I saw that and I was like, I think we were just meant to meet then. Yes. That's just basically all there is to it. Um, and so I, I wanted to share that with you. It's the best, right? Yeah, it is so good. You guys, if you're, if you're, listen, let me tell you something. If you're just putting regular old sugar in your coffee. You're missing out, guys. I don't know what you're doing with your life. Um, seriously, you're missing out. You got to get some things figured out because, yeah, it's just. Maple syrup is where it's at. Yes. And it's just, and it, you know what? And it's good for you. It's not mm-hmm. good for you, but it's good for you. We're going to say it's good for you because it's natural. It's, how about there better? It's better for you. That, I like that. Re, 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 rebranding the word good to better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it natural. Works. It's natural. It works. Like, you know, because I look at the sugar and I'm like, ah, and I realize syrup is also sugar. And then I probably, the amount of syrup I put in is probably the same. Yeah, it's content. fine. But whatever. I just pretend it's better for me. Everything's fine. It's just more robust. I love that word, robust. <laughs> it just gives you more robust taste yes there we go um so yeah i thought that was awesome because i was like oh wait a minute girl i do it too and people look at me like i'm nuts when i go um because like for with dance you know like we'll have like traveling competitions or whatever and i will get a cup of coffee and then i'll be like do you guys have any syrup (laughs) yeah and they're like no i will use honey in a pinch yeah I do um, the exact same thing. Yeah. I use honey. And if I have to, I'll use the raw sugar. Yeah. Like a lot of places yes. have the raw sugar. Yeah. I'll use the raw that. sugar if I have to, but white sugar yeah. and not, I'm, no, I just don't. Yeah. I'll drink it black before I put the sh- like raw sugar in it. I, I mean, for before I put regular white sugar in it. Yeah. I don't know. I understand that it's all sucre. I get it, but I, I just, I, yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, <laughs> I do. I, I am 150% with you because yeah. I feel very, very strongly about how amazing maple syrup is in coffee. Yes. I think everybody should drink it that way. Yeah. Like, it, it, listen, we're just trying to help you. And that's <laughs> really what it is. We're trying to help you. We're trying to tell you what needs to happen so that your, your life can get better. Exactly. Um, and one of the ways you can do that is by putting maple syrup in your coffee. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know what to tell you. So Megan, I want to tell you, you did a great job on your first podcast interview ever. She said, she told me this was her first podcast. So Thank you. that was, it's been so much fun. I'm so happy and grateful that you wanted to include me in your program. Well, yes, of course I did. You, like I said, you, <laughs> what are you even talking about right now? Um, <laughs> no, because like I said, you, you answered the call. Um, and there were a few, a few good women that answered the call and you were one of them. And, um, then when I, when we spoke, you know, before this, I was just like, oh yeah, no, she's, we, we need her. We love her. Um, and so she's, like I said, people, she's one of us. She's, she's one of our mom, like she's one of us. Um, and so I, I was uh, thrilled to have you on the show today. So don't even, and that's why I, I asked you 
please come back. Please do more things. I am 100% on board. I have have a blast talking to you. Yes. I have a blast talking to you too. So we're going to have to figure out how to like, um, somehow talk to each other actually in like a physical person (laughs) at one point, maybe if we could ever leave our houses. I was going to say someday. Yeah. Some, someday when we can leave our houses again, but Mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us today. Mm -hmm. And listen, guys, if you want to learn more about Megan and what she does, you can visit Megan Diaz coaching.com and you can start to get your business in gear. So, um, like I said, all of her social media information, her website address, anything, I'll put information about the workshop in there too. Um, they will be in the notes for this episode. And so Megan, before we go, is there anything else you'd like to share with the moms who are listening? It doesn't even have to be about anything we talked about today. Um, really? It's just, I would say just number one, don't ever be afraid to ask for help when it comes to anything. Um, you know, find the people that are on your team that you trust in it, whether it's about your health, your wellness, when you have the babies, or when you're looking to launch your business to up level, whatever it is about your life, like have people on your team that you know, that you trust and that you can go to and never be afraid to ask them for help. There you go. That's, that's, um, yeah, I, I do a lot of talks where I go to different groups around Indiana and I tell them, ask for help. <laughs> Do not yeah. be afraid to ask for help. And that, cause that's yeah. another, that's another one of our, our things, moms that get, that get, that get us because we're yeah. afraid to ask for help. Um, but if we can all admit that we need help, then we shouldn't be afraid to ask for it because we all know we need it. So we just got to be willing to step out there. So Megan, thank you so much. Um, you, like I said, you guys, you will hear from her again. She will be back um, in some way, shape or form. So you'll be able to see how cute she is too. Um, <laughs> and we're going to get all gussied up for y'all. <laughs> thank you. That was wonderful. So I had a blast. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You guys, I absolutely love Megan. And full disclosure, we spoke for at least another 45 minutes after we stopped recording. She is so fun. And I have a special treat for you. Like I said in the episode, she was going to, you're going to hear from her again. And so today is the day, if you are listening to this on the day this episode dropped, which is May 11th, she is going to be on our Mom Business May group. So if you have not joined that group and you want to get in on it, you can go to dannycarteridens.com slash mombusinessmay. Now, I know this is after the cutoff because I was supposed to cut off the group on Saturday, but you know what? I'm thinking about it, and I really feel like you could still get some value from this group, even if you weren't joining us from the beginning. There's still a lot of value to be had, and we're going to have guest speakers, Megan being the first, throughout the entire month. You're going to learn a lot of stuff. So don't Don't freak out if you didn't join us right on May 1st. It is okay. All are welcome. All are welcome to join. I'm so excited that you are, you know, that you listen to what she had to say and that you may be able to jump on tonight or later today or later this week, later this month, whatever. Her live is going to stay up in the group for 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 the foreseeable future. So once you listen to this episode, be sure to pop on over to the Mom Business May group at dannycarteridens.com slash MBM so that you can listen to her, see her cute face um, and all the things that she has to say. She's going to be doing a goal settings workshop. All right, guys. Well, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful start to your week. I know this is new. We're posting, um, you know, we put a new episode up on Monday, and we will also put another episode up on Wednesday, and that episode will be with Emma Farrick. She's another mom who will be speaking in the Mom Business May group who started her business. And you guys, her story is just like a wild one. So I can't wait. I'm so excited. You guys, I'm just like loving talking to all these moms, listening to their stories and how they are, you know, really like pulling themselves up by their bootstraps to get where they are and to do what they do. And I just, I wanted you to hear their stories because I knew that if you heard from these women, if you were having any trepidation about starting a business or just following your dream in general, whatever your dream may be, I wanted you to hear from these women because they all went through something. Every single one of the women that I've spoken to and that I'm going to speak to and that I'm going to share with you have gone through something, but they have come out on the other side and they have risen um, you know, to the occasion. They are shining. They are glowing. They are getting stuff done. So I, I think they're excellent examples for how amazing a smile 
mamas can be. All right, guys, have a wonderful start to your week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks so much for listening. For more information on Taking Back You and the Taking Back You Momcast, visit us at takingbackyou.com. From there, you'll be able to follow us on social media, listen to past episodes, and learn all about the mission of Taking Back You. Be sure to subscribe to get future episodes. And from all of us at Taking Back You, thank you so much for your support.